Hey guys, welcome back to the Oilers Fanatic and another edition of the Oilers Rundown. Well, we got some updates today from Dave Tippett, so I thought I'd go over them with you guys. First off, uh, what I have to call great news, uh, Zach Hyman is only day-to-day. -day. Um, early reports from Ryan Rashog were saying that he's going to possibly be out one to two weeks, so I'll definitely take day-to-day -day over that, although <laughs> we only have to need to look as far as Mike Smith for how quickly day-to-day -day can go to hell. But for now, let's uh, hope that that's actually a positive thing and uh, Zach Hyman hasn't been ruled out for coming back tomorrow. So fingers crossed we can have uh, Hyman in the lineup tomorrow for the Oilers. Mike Smith isn't quite ready to come back yet, but he is close according to Tippett. So we could see him at some point this week. And Duncan Keith is probable for tomorrow. He was his first full practice back with the team today. So we'll see what happens with Keith, but we might be able to see him tomorrow. And Slater Cuckoo, I believe was close as well, but not quite yet ready to join the lineup. So some positive things. Uh, I was really worried that we might get really bad news on Hyman. So really happy that he's only day to day and might have him back sooner rather than later. In practice today, the Oilers were running with Zach Cassian and Warren Fogle in the top six. I'm actually hoping Warren Fogle can stay in the top six and actually gets an opportunity tomorrow against Toronto. We'll see what the lineup looks like for tomorrow. I think I'd much rather have, uh, at this point, uh, Fogle getting an opportunity in the top six over Zach Cassian, but I'm sure the Oilers also want to try and get Cassian going as well. And it uh, looks like Yamo is playing on the third line right now, so might see Yamo on the third line tomorrow. Uh, he was skating with Ryan McLeod and Devin Shore on the third line. Uh, another thing I wanted to touch on, goalie we talked about in the summer and we've talked about in the fall here a bit too, Anton Hudobin is on waivers from the Dallas Stars. I can't see anyone claiming Anton Hudobin at this point. He's making 3.33 million this year and next. Uh, I've seen a few people wondering if maybe the Oilers might claim him. I can't see that. Uh, the Oilers got to be dollar in, dollar out moves right now. So there's no cap space to take Hudobin. And they'd have to have another deal where Koskinen was headed out or something like that. And right now, with his numbers so far, Anton Hudobin isn't an upgrade on Miko Koskinen at this point. Yeah, in seven games this year, Dobin has a 3.73 goals against average and a save percentage of 8.73. So for 3.33 million, he is not a player I would target at this point. I like the thought of him in the summer, but based on his play so far this year, I can't see him coming in and being a huge upgrade. So yeah, I don't see anybody claiming Hudobin. I imagine he'll clear and he might get assigned to Dallas's AHL team tomorrow. The big talk from the last couple days, a uh, report from Elliot Friedman on Saturday that the Oilers are targeting a goaltender, left shot defenseman, and a third line center for the trade deadline. Friedman noted that the Oilers are unlikely to land all three of those. Obviously that would be a lot of pieces to bring in for one trade deadline. At this point, I think Ken Holland will definitely target a goaltender. I don't think Miko Koskinen is gonna be here past the trade deadline. I think Koskinen is going to get moved somewhere and his replacement will be the upgrade. With Mike Smith having another year on his contract, I think worst comes to worst. If Mike Smith is injured again, he goes on LTIR. But otherwise, we might see a goalie with an expiring contract brought in. I personally wouldn't mind seeing Marc-Andre Fleury if they can make it work. I know a lot of you guys don't like him anymore. I think he's washed up or whatever, but... Fleury did win the Vesna Trophy last year, and he's had a great bounce back so far after a rough start with Chicago. So I personally wouldn't have any problem with bringing Marc-Andre Fleury in if they can find a way to make the money work. He does make $7 million, but obviously a starting point would be Koskinen going out the door. That's 4.5 right there, and obviously have to work it from there. But I think that's all for today, guys. Thanks as always for checking out the channel and for all your support. If this is your first visit to the channel, please consider liking and subscribing for all the latest Oilers content. You've been watching the Oilers Fanatic. Thanks for being a fan. Have a great night, guys. I'll see you tomorrow night for the Fanatic Rundown, where hopefully the Oilers can break their five-game losing streak. Have a great night, guys.